What is going on, Basehead family? Part three of the 18 inch build on 16,000 watts that we are doing in the Sequoia. Of course, running two of these Sundown Audio X 18s. This is going to be a blast. Tons of y'all have asked me to do some eight and 18 inch builds. So here we go. We're gonna see what we can do with this. On the first video, we got our four channel amp hooked up to my Black Diamond speakers. All that hooked up uh, working well now. And then in the last video, we finished out my amp wall back here. Got the 16K all hooked up, ready to go. So that means the next thing we gotta do guys is of course, start building the box for these big old subs. So that's what we're gonna do today. That's right guys, time to start on the box. Now to design this box, I did something real simple and easy. Use the Ultimate Car Audio app. Now I do gotta give my buddy Patrick over at Smash Designs a big shout out. He knows way more than I know about designing boxes. So he did come up with the overall design for this box and I really, really appreciate that. Now y'all, this is gonna be a big, big old box. Tuned in the low 30s. I believe it's about 12 cubic feet. Now it's gonna be 48 inches wide. That is as wide as I can possibly go back here between the two wheel wells. It's gonna be 32 inches deep, which brings me right to here. That leaves me between seven and eight inches for space between the box and the port and of course my trunk. And then guys, we're gonna be 20 inches high. That is as high as this 15 inch box right here. So y'all, gonna be a big old box. It's gonna take up the entire trunk of this thing. Real quick, just to give y'all just kind of make a, a comparison and a visual of just how big these 18s are. Here's a black brick heavy hitter 15. This is one stout 15 inch sub. Big, decently heavy fella. And then of course, the Sundown 18 over here. Here's another quick comparison. This of course, the big old black brick brick house sub. This guy actually might be a little heavier. This thing does have a really, really large motor on it. But still, just look at the comparison of these two. This 18 is going to be wild, guys. I cannot wait to see these guys in action. Should be absolutely awesome. But the way the box is designed, but we can mount these regular or we can mount them inverted. It will, of course, change the airspace and the tuning a teeny bit. So maybe we'll mess around with both, see what we like better for everyday use. I do like to have the sub mounted regular, just so that way I can see out my back glass. And if I was to get into a wreck, we'd have to worry about that motor, you know, flying off or whatever. But hey, it could be cool to invert it too and see what that does. I do love seeing those big old beefy motors sticking up. So who knows guys, let me know in the comments which way you think I should do it. Now real quick guys, of course, gotta give a big shout out to Big Jeff for hooking up the amps for this build. He also supplied all the uh, speakers and super tweeters that we have in the front door. So super thankful for that. Also at the end of this build, we are doing a giveaway with some of the equipment that Big Jeff has sent me. We have a big Def Bonds 2000 watt five channel amp and a bunch of swags from uh, Big Jeff. So stay tuned for that as well. And last, of course, this video is sponsored by Def Bonds. Really appreciate them as well. So good word for them guys. Then we're gonna start building this box. Now, what I love about Death Bonds is that I have tested a ton, ton of subs. Some have done really, really well, some haven't. A while back, I tested a Death Bond sub and they actually hit me up and they said, hey man, you need to put that thing through a five minute 40 hertz test tone at its RMS power just to see what it can take. And I thought that was absolutely crazy, but I thought that was really cool. They reached out to me and asked me to do that. So since then with every Def Bond sub that I have tested, that is exactly what I have done. And y'all, they make it through the five minutes, which is absolutely crazy. Well guys, go check out Alfred Audio in the description below. They of course own Def Bonds and Avatar. So go check them out, link in the description below. All right guys. Back to the video. All right, guys, now we are using the Ultimate Car Audio app to build this box. This is not a promotion for them or anything. I just do use this app a lot for my videos, so I wanna show you real quick how we're gonna calculate the box. Now, of course, here is the uh, Car Ultimate Car Audio app. We have tons of cool stuff that we can do over here, but of course, we're gonna be building a box. I love this guy's humor. 
make a base go whoop, whoop, whoop. So of course we have a few different options. We are doing a slot port box for this design. So then over here, you can just kind of start plugging in some numbers. So we know we can go 48 inches wide and we can go 32 inches deep. We're gonna have one baffle. I'm gonna leave this placement alone for now. Uh, the port thickness is gonna be 0.75. That's what size our plywood is. Wood thickness, 0.75. Seven, five. Now I know this box is gonna be 20 inches high, but of course you could just plug in something to get started to kind of figure out what worked. Now since it's gonna be 20 inches, that means the port height is going to be 18.5. Now kind of what I don't like here is it's not, it doesn't really figure it for you. You kind of gotta figure it out. There are some little easier apps. You just put in what you want to be tuned to and it'll figure it, but here we gotta play around. Now I know we're gonna go with eight inches there. Let's plug in 20 inches here. We're gonna say calculate. So what this is telling us, we'd have about six cubes per sub. Box would be tuned to 33 hertz. Port area would be 148 inches squared. Port volume, 2.12 cubic feet. Can I tell you what the uh, estimated bandwidth would be? Where to set your subsonic filter, low pass filter, in all of your cutouts. Okay, now what is kind of neat, so you can see if we make the port shorter, that makes our tuning a lot higher, changes things. You know, let's make the port way bigger. So you can see doing that, I would bring our tuning to 30 hertz. So kind of in interesting stuff here. Anyway, uh, let's change up a few things. Let's see what happens if we make this port wider. Okay, so what is kind of neat if you do put in specs, guys, that are just way out of range, we can do that, but then you can see that uh, throws our port area. We're letting your foot into the red there, which is not what we want, guys. Okay, well, I've got this all in here, just like Patrick uh, said we should do it. So let's see exactly what we got. I may make a little couple tweaks to this as we get into building, but this is a good start. It brings up your calculations over here, shows you exactly what everything will be tuned to. I do, shows you your bandwidth. We are building this to be a box that can, you know, play down into those 20s, but it's going to sound good musically. We, of course, have our cutout sheet. This is super handy. Really do love this, guys. Well, guys, of course, there are, there's other software out there that's going to be better. But if you want something quick and easy, that's on your phone. That does do a pretty good job. Definitely check this out. Anyway, guys, stoked to have this kind of figured out, ready to go. Time to get to building. Okay guys, now to build this box, we are using this maple hardwood plywood that I have. This is the nicest stuff that I can get at my local Lowe's. Now this is only seven ply. I know a lot of people like to use, I believe it's like the birch, that's like 13 ply. I believe you can get some of that at maybe Home Depot, but I don't have a Home Depot here, so this is what we are working with. This is what I've built my last couple boxes with. And overall guys, it does just fine. I really like it. So let's get these down. Start cutting on them. Okay, we've got our plywood ready to go, guys. I did a little bit of measuring to figure it out. Now, of course, this plywood is already 48 inches wide, so that is perfect. Less cutting I have to do. And then since our box is 32 inches deep, the plywood is 96 inches. So, of course, divide that by three, that gives us the 32, which is perfect because we're gonna have uh, one piece on the bottom and then the top is gonna be double baffled. Then we have the other piece here and it should be just enough for my back, my sides, my front, and my uh, port slots, which is good. Don't have to go grab uh, any more wood, guys. So this is perfect. Let's get to cutting.
So we've got all the pieces cut. Of course, our bottom, double top, our back, our two sides, our front pieces, and our port. So let's kind of lay this out just so y'all can see it. All right, here is the layout for this box. Something just a little different than I have done before. Like on my uh, box with the 815s, I had a bottom slot port. Now why do we have this this way, as opposed to maybe having it on the side? Really the main thing is uh, strength, guys. Even though it's gonna be double baffled, it'll still be pretty dang strong. Having the port in the middle just acts as a support right in the middle between the two subs, so might as well. 